Hello everybody, welcome back to Razmafsar channel. Today I'm going to show you my first book which I uh, published in 2006, Arms and Armor from Iran, the Bronze Age to the end of the Qajar period. This book was published by the German publisher Legat Verlag in 2006 and won a major book prize the World Book Prize of Iranian Studies in 2009, granted by Ministry of Culture of Iran, which was a big ceremony and I was really happy to win this prize back then. It was really great in 2009. The book weighs uh, five kilos already. If you see, if I remove the jacket, you see it has also a beautiful hard jacket inside. You see this? Many people don't know that, possibly. And uh, as I said, uh, it is. it has 780 pages. I'm going now um, to explain later on in detail which parts of it uh, are dedicated to what. But important to, for you to know, I was the first researcher who was granted the permission of three military museums in Iran the Military Museum of Tehran in Sadabad Palace Museum, Military Museum of Shiraz in Kakhe Afifabad, Afifabad Palace and in Shiraz, and also a museum, Military Museum of Bandar Anzali, which is in northern of Iran. These three military museums, they make up uh, 16 museums, Iranian museums, which I investigated for the inventory of arms and armor they had. Why these three are extremely important? Because they were collection, or they make up the collection, royal collection of Iranian kings, uh, which were uh, collected up to the period from one generation to the other, up to the period of Nasiruddin Shah Qajar. So in Nasiruddin Shah Qajar period, all these uh, inventory you see, hundreds of beautiful items, were his personal collection. Later, during Pahlavi period, they were kept in the, um, uh, the military uh, university, Danishkade Afsari, and then after the revolution of Iran, they were uh, divided into three uh, different museums. Military Museum of uh, Tehran, Shiraz, and Bandar Anzari. But these are not the only museums I investigated. As I said, 16 museums I analyzed took pictures and all these things. And one of them, and which another important one, is um, National Museum of Iran. Uh, and this National Museum of Iran is the archaeological museum, Museum Iran Bastan. Uh, also show many important things there. What are these? For example, um, for the first time excavated Parthian and Sassanid uh, swords I show there and uh, you, which you will going to see here. The rest are Pars Museum, Nadiri Museum in Mashhad, Pars Museum in Shiraz, and so on and so on. Now, let me just introduce this to you. My book, Arms and Armor from Iran, the Bronze Age to the end of the Qajar period which I published in 2006 in Germany. Um, well, this book starts with an introduction and after I uh, give an introduction uh, to the history, military history of Iran, it uh, continues with the Iranian cultural influence in the region and Iranian search for independence as a chapter, a glimpse into the military history of Iran. Then here you see, just I explained some chapters of the military history of Iran, um, conquests, and also invo military involvement. Here you see how uh, from the ancient Iran, also up to the end of the Qajar period, uh, most important events uh, explained in short. The next chapter, chapter 3, is bronze and iron weapons from Iran. Here, as you see, I explain how bronze weapons were cast uh, explicitly and they were made, different uh, ways of casting, 
or uh, I explain in detail as here you can see them then at the same time you can see also uh, uh, different ways different weapons which are uh, shown here and uh, also uh, some statutes which uh, carry these bronze weapons are shown in this chapter basically the whole idea is to have also um, classification like tanked bronze weapons uh, short swords and dir dirks and daggers and uh, as well as when they were cast on uh, handles and in one piece cast on handles and later the designs which were made by uh, uh, lost wax, wax method and then here you see iron weapons and these iron weapons from Luristan are explained in detail which are a very which make up a ch inter an interesting chapter here and then the whole classification of bronze and iron weapons are discussed here in detail also from northern Iran Marlik the next chapter is about Achaemenian, Achaemenid, uh, Median and Achaemenid uh, weapons, arms and armor which the, it's described here uh, you see also some statutes and also Persepolis stone reliefs are analyzed and as well as Akenake or Akenakes made of gold you see here then the next chapter goes into the I mean I just show some pages of it not everything of course Parthian swords and daggers which are I show here for the first time party daggers and swords which are excavated in the Iran cap in the National Museum of Iran archaeological museum is the Iran Boston Museum and here you see a Parthian statue made of bronze which has a dagger typical dagger of the a Parthian dagger and here you see Parthian uh, swords and daggers again the next one is about uh, the Sasanian Sasanian swords which is an extensive chapter on it here uh, I, you see uh, explanation and classification of Sasanian swords based on stone reliefs Sasanian stone reliefs and um, then it comes also to real material, I mean swords which were excavated and are kept in the uh, Iran Bastan Museum as well as in, in those which were confiscated from smugglers. So you see the classification of all Sasanid swords here in detail explained in my book. I just show again some chapters and for the first time I saw a show also two-handed Sassanid sword. Then we go to the importance and meaning of swords in Iran after the Muslim conquest. In this chapter I describe patterned crucible steel, what crucible steel is, and uh, also describe some uh, manuals, manuscripts on how to make them, Persian manuals and manuscripts. And I, I explain um, the making process of patterned crucible steel here in detail. See again uh, the production and manufacturing uh, process of crucible steel. I explain in detail here. You see here lots of information on it. And I go on and uh, introduce some manuals and manuscripts on them. Then I also go to pattern welded steel uh, because it was also used to make blades and later on guns, gun barrels. Here you see. Uh, some Kame and Gaddare made of pattern crucible steel and also a gun shown there, right, as you see. And then again, manuals on uh, Beiruni, what Beiruni says, what Khayyam and Ishaburi says on sword, which in Nauru's name is introduced for the first time and translated into English by me in my book, Arms and Armor from Iran. You see, then I go into the classification of patterns of uh, pattern crucible steel here. I show different types of patterned crucible steel and explain the names of them, classification of them in detail. You see here I go on with classification of them, of different patterned crucible steel of sorts, shamshirs. I continue with patterned crucible steel. You see quite lots of information here. I just show some selective pages here. And as many collectors and researchers love these patterns, I just go more in detail. You see lots of information I'm uh, showing here to you, but it's not all, as I mentioned. 
Then the next chapter is about Shamshir and Sivarayans. What types of Shamshir are there? The different types, because Shamshir is a general term in Persian. First, um, I, you see that here I explain the development of the shape of Shamshir in Iran, Persia. You see different types are explained here, and also types of Shamshir which are attributed to Timur. Wow. You need, we need lots of research still on them, but at least attributed. And here you see that there are also uh, different parts of Shamshir explained um, in Persian, the names in Persian, which are important, you know, and as well different signs like Bodu sign, which is in gold in, inlaid Bodu signs in numbers and also in letters, explain what they mean, what these types, what these signs mean. You see that. Um, goes into the different cartouches, gold inlaid cartouches like Bandei Shah Belayat Abbas and the rest. Uh, here you see it comes to uh, also makers uh, names and also uh, like uh, Asadullah and later on you see different types uh, on uh, different uh, Persian uh, Shamshirs. These are very important because most of them are loyal sh uh, royal Shamshirs attributed to Iranian kings many of them Safavi period and here we go sword made by Kalbali signed by Kalbali name sword maker Kalbali explained in detail you see here we have more examples like Ali Asghar Esfahani who made Shamshir for Karim Khanizan again a royal Shamshir captain of the military museum of Tehran Sad about complex music, palace music. See other makers' names are here explained in detail. There is an extensive list of makers, sword makers in Iran. You see, lots of them are explained. The names here, you find a list so you can attribute uh, the name of a sword maker here to this um, table if you have in your collection. Here I describe different types of Shamshir handles found in Iranian museum and selected private collections. You see here Kolahak, Pomo cap, you see how they were decorated, decoration methods on also cross guards. You see there are different decoration methods on cross guards and also on Pomo caps. Again it goes on different types of uh, well decoration methods. You see and then here the chapter ends and then I, I continue with the mystery behind Zulfagar, uh, the bifur bifurcated sword of Hazrat Ali. Here I continue with that. Then he go here I, I, I go on with uh, Persian straight swords, Iranian straight swords, which, is, which there is a chapter dedicated to it. Then also a chapter dedicated to Shamshir and Nizami military swords in Iran, which were introduced by European advisors but later made in Iranian pattern by Iranian sword makers, also many of them with crucible steel. Unbelievable. Combination of Western influence and also Persian handicraft. Here you can see clearly in this chapter. There is also an extensive chapter on Qameon Qaddare, short swords used for self-defense. Kameh is the straight one with double edged and Qaddar is single edged. Here is a chapter, an extensive chapter on Khanja dagger. Many of them are magnificent pieces of art, as you will see in the catalog part. Then I go ahead with card with the knife. Here is also an extensive chapter on it, dedicated to card, different types of them. As you see, here again the card. And on the right side you see a Pishkabs. Another dagger, S-shaped dagger, also a chapter dedicated to it. This is a marvelous dagger. You see different types of uh, royal collection uh, having this type of dagger, S-shaped uh, blade. Then uh, the next chapter is dedicated to Neize and Zubin spear, spear and javelin. You see different types from the Bronze Age, I explain. I'll just show you again some pages only. You see classification of uh, bronze uh, spear and lance heads in, in Luristan, also in northern Iran. Many of them excavated the National Museum of Iran. 
and you know, we come the Islamic period, you see many of them made of crucible steel uh, here, as you see. Then the next chapter is dedicated to gores, to the maze, you see also different types of them. I explain in detail, you can find a detailed classification on them. You see the, the flank maze, also animal, with animal and human faces, round uh, uh, maces. And the next chapter is on Tabar and Tabarzin, on axis, and saddle axis. Again, starting from the Bronze Age classification. The next chapter is dedicated to shields, different shields from ancient Iran. Here you see Achaemenid types up to the uh, Islamic period. You see again, here very explained. And then here, in the Islamic period shields, you see them here made of hide, also made of steel, different types of shields. And here you see again the chapter of shields ends and then it goes to Zereh and Joshan as armor in Persian. You see here uh, the helmets and different types of armor I explained. Here you see Char Aine former armor and here also you see different bazu bands arm protection uh, in Iranian museums and here you see also some selected selected pages from my book the next chapter is dedicated to Kaman bow composite bow and the history of bows you see many of them from the royal collection of Iran Nasser Dinshah here it starts with arrowheads, uh, bronze and iron arrowheads, like many of them excavated, kept in the National Museum of Iran. You see the different types here also explained, and here it goes the quivers, and I explain them in detail. Next chapter is on the emblem and symbols of the lion and the sun on the Iranian arms and armor, which is an important sign and symbol. You see, uh, I explained the symbol and the meaning of lion and the sun and why they appear on Iranian weapons. The next chapter, as you see here, is on Iranian martial arts. Here you see Barzish Pahlavani and also it goes into wrestling types. Here you see different types of uh, tools used in Marzisha Pahlavani, champions sport in detail, which is a traditional and historical martial arts of Iran. Uh, so and then the Koshti uh, wrestling is explained. In the next chapter I talk about Darvishes because Darvishes were also a driving force of fighters in Iranian history. And the role of Naqali, which also recitations of Shah Nameh. They used also weapons to show during these performances. And then uh, the next chapter it goes and explains Tazyeh because Tazyeh, the morning for Imam Hussein, also used different types of arms and armor. At the end, my book is uh, as a conclusion, so I just provide a conclusion. Then the catalog starts here. You see from Elam, Elamite daggers, bronze daggers, which are magnificent pieces. In the catalog, uh, each um, item is described in detail again, and also the measurements are given. Here you see uh, also bronze dagger with ore mast, and also different types of inscriptions in ancient Persian. Here again you see bronze dirks and daggers in the National Museum of Iran. I investigated and analyzed all of them. Here you see iron mask weapons from Luristan really great examples you see many of them in the books here I show only some selections of them you see also here again on the left side the uh, bronze dirk sword and on the right side excuse me the left side the uh, iron and the right side the bronze one then the next one again you see there from northern Iran and you see 
our Lou bronze sword here a magnificent piece from Achaemenid period from this one is the Metropolitan Museum of War, uh, New York and here is the National Museum of Atlanta intact piece here you see for the first time I show some parking swords and daggers here you see one of them an excavated Pantheon sword See parking daggers. So, again, here you see early Sassanid. In the next page, yeah, here you see early Sassanid sword excavated, which were carried by a scabbed uh, slide system. And for the first time, I show a two handed Sassanid sword. Yeah. Late Sassanid period, then silver covered, silver scabbard and handle. You see with a P shaped scabbard um, and also with feather pattern. Also silver. Here an exceptional piece, which are these are also very beautiful pieces. Which are two of them are carried in Iran, one in National Museum of Iran and one in Azabra Museum. Really good pieces. Also, in contrast to what many people say, because they have never handled them, they are really useful, useful weapons. Here you see one of the shamshirs, which is attributed to Timur, which needs a further investigation, of course. Please also read my lexicon because I have more updated information on this shamshir. Here you see a beautiful crucible steel shamshir attributed to Shah Ismail Safavi. Shamshir attributed to Shah Abbas Safavi. One of them, there are some of them described in my book. Here you see another one attributed to uh, Shah Abbas. You see, they're all uh, beautiful ones, beautiful works. Another Shamshir, Royal Shamshir. You can find details on each one of them to which king it belongs. And also measurements and also meaning of inscriptions all in detail. Right. So it's on the left side Shah Safi Safavid, you see on the right side Shah Suleiman. And here one with Amal Asadullah, the very beautiful Shamshir, as you see. Here you see another um, Shamshir made of uh, Persian crucible seal with Amal Asadullah, Mia Qazi Al Hajant. Another Shamshir uh, made of Persian crucible steel. You see the beautiful pattern on this one as well. This is uh, Shamshir attributed uh, to Nader Shah Afshar, which is Captain Mashak, Nader in Museum. I analyzed and investigated in my book. This is a magnificent Shamshir, really, attributed to Karim Khanizan. This has a provenance like the other Shamshirs. And uh, there are two Shamshirs attributed to me. One is this one in Shiraz, and the other one is this one, which is Captain Military Museum of. Uh, so you can see different types of shamshirs in this book, you can see different types of blades, some of them are fuller, some of them are not, different decoration methods, and also here you can see a shamshir attributed to Fatali Shah Qajar, his personal shamshir, there are different ones of them, four of them which are described in my book, you see another one, how beautiful it is, Yamur Tezali and also a Persian line of the sun. And look at the um, Shamshir fittings, they're really beautiful scabbard fittings. And then here you see a magnificent piece of Persian straight sword with a handle with Persian enamel, really beautiful and Persian crucible steel blade. Here you see examples of military swords with jeweled handle and Persian crucible steel blade. Yeah, really beautiful. And Persian line and handle. Here you see examples of Qaddare. One of them is also made of crucible steels, most of them are patterned welded steel blades. 
Here is an example of Qameh. Uh, one of them attributed to Abbas Mirza Bajar on the left, and the other one, look how beautifully carved they are, a war was iron. Here is an example, a beautiful example of Hanjar, the wall was ivory card. Look at the beautiful images. This one is quite interesting with sexual scenes. <laughs> Very beautiful, beautifully carved on both sides. And uh, the next one also, you see the concept of Europeanizing, which is explained in my book as a method of decoration introduced in the Qajar period of Iran. You see another Hanjar, also beautifully carved and worked on here from this period here. Really nice blade as well. Here you see examples of Hanjar enamel. Some of them are enameled on copper background and some of them are enameled on gold background, pure gold. These are all court daggers. Really beautiful examples as you see. The enameling is magnificent. And then you see also hanjars which are made of silver, silver uh, handle, and also crucible steel blades. Really beautiful. You see the exp explanations in the book, in my book. And here you see card, also made of uh, patterned crucible steel, really beautifully um, inscribed from the Quran. Look at the gilded areas, really beautifully done. It's a magnificent piece of art, Persian handicraft. Another Persian uh, card, also made of crucible steel, and also name of the maker, you can see in my book the explanations on each of these pieces and here you see a fish maps, really beautiful, beautiful example. look at the work which has been put in it also another fish maps layer, has shaped um, plate, also very beautifully done, really nice piece then here it goes to the chapter lances and spears. Here you see some examples made of copper alloy bronze. Really nice one. You see from the Islamic period, I'm just showing you some examples. Also those made of steel. There are javelins, there are different types of spear and lance heads. You see there. And then the next chapter is dedicated in the catalog I mean, uh, to maces. Here it starts with uh, bronze mace hats. Also beautiful examples here. These are also very beautiful ones, especially the one on the right one, which is an excavated piece by Dr. Riyabon from Marek. You see different human hats with facial expressions in the features. Another mace, you see bronze mace, and then from Islamic point on the right side. And then axes, again from uh, ancient Yuma, the lowest side, you see how beautiful these pieces are. You see again, different types. On the right is from Amlash in Gila. And then axes from the Islamic period made of crucible steel. Look at how beautiful these pieces are. Look at the pattern. And then from the uh, Afsharid period, one on the left side, you see how beautiful it is from military museum in Jama. And then from the Qajar period on the right side. Then it comes to shields, different Persian height shields. Persians used height shields as manifested also in the manuals, not only steel. These are also all from Royal Collection of Iran. It sheds new light on our understanding of shields as well. You see, this is one shield made of crucible steel, really beautiful from Safavid period. On the right side, there is another one made of height. Look at these ones, they're really beautiful. The right one, both made of high. The right one, look at the way it's made. It's really a piece of art. 
see here translucent you can just see the light to it so made of height rhino height here this one's really beautiful as you can see nice and sharp and then here you see bazo band arm guards really beautiful different types are explained and shown and measured in my book from the real collection mostly made of crucible steel pattern crucible steel here you see char aine attributed to shah ismail misafari made of crucible steel so decorated in gold you see char aine also from safari plate safari here also from late Safavid period, very beautiful one. Another Chinese, you see here, also from late Safavid period here. And this one is from Zan period, made of hide, hardened hide plates, really beautiful piece, Chinese. Here you see Kola Hood helmets, really beautiful, beautiful work done. And then riveted uh, male armor. Look at how much work is being put and was put into the seven period male armor. Really beautiful. This one is also riveted, also early cut up here. So not for show, but the real ones. Real armor. And very beautiful Kaman bows from Safari Persian bows. Look at these beauties. How beautiful these are. Many of them with inscriptions on them. Really See another example. This one is from the Military Museum of Shiraz. Shiraz. And a Gajar period from Military Museum of Tehran. The next one. Hunting scenes. A typical Gajar uh, painting scenes. Then we have uh, Tear Dawn, also uh, quivers, and also different arrows and arrowheads, all intact, really magnificent. And then here we have quivers from uh, the Bronze Age era. See how beautiful this one is made or was made. Here you see different arrowheads made of bronze. Really beautifully made. And then arrowheads or arrows uh, from the Zan period with arrowheads made of steel. It has also my book of name index indices and also another index subject index as well. And a very extensive reference list uh, for you. Consult. Well, you have seen my book uh, Arms and Armor from Iran, uh, the Br Bronze Age to the End of the Qajar Period. So I just wanted also to introduce this myself to you. I know my books uh, has my book has been reviewed a couple of times in print journals and also on the internet in uh, different YouTube channels, but this is the first time that I introduce it myself. Now, why did I do that? Why have I done this? The reason is uh, we are running a campaign, a Kickstarter campaign, and this kick Kickstarter campaign is about um, printing my next book, Persian Fire and Steel. Now. Here we have different options and we have a very good deal. The deal is the following. You can have this book, Arms and Armor from Iran, together with my upcoming book, Persian Fire and Steel, Historical Firearms of Iran, at a considerable discount as one of the options. There are also other options, starting from a postcard and so on. So I would really like to ask you to contribute to this. So you can buy this book as well and even if you do not want to take part in this Kickstarter campaign and you wish to buy this book, I'm going to leave an um, email here. Here you can see in the descriptions of this um, video, so you can contact my colleagues there to order this book. 
Thank you very much and have a nice day.